Hello everyone and welcome to a quick overview and tutorial of the new uh, Mesh to Volume tool for Unreal Engine 4. So what I have as an initial setup is just a blank project and uh, let's dive into what the Mesh to Volume tool actually does. So inside we're going to find a map called a Mesh to Volume map. Uh, let's enter that. So this is pretty much uh, the tool. So uh, not much to look at right now, but if we press play, uh, we could see that a we do have a setup mesh that's being converted to a volume that we could also go inside. Um, and, it, and in the back, we could see the slices of the texture that's being generated from this. So um, let's see uh, what's going on with all of that. So for starters, uh, if we go to our world outliner, we can select our mesh to scan. And right now we have it set up as a, a human head. So let's replace it with uh, something else just to see how everything works out. So for this test, we're going to use a uh, mech model that uh, we've provided with this. Uh, there is also a cloud and a fractal. Uh, we can go over the, these a bit later. So uh, just to see the model better, we're going to apply one of these textures to it. So now that we can see what's going on, we're going to increase the size a bit and uh, just rotate it like so. A uh, quick way to get it right in the center of the mesh would be to uh, copy the location and just uh, paste it on the mech and then we can adjust uh, the overall height. So right now, let's make the mesh a bit bigger, hopefully we could uh, get some artifacts to show. So uh, now without further ado, let's just press play and see what happens. So. For starters, we could see that the first frame over here, we can get a little bit of a ghost. Uh, if we go here, we can see that the first frame is actually triggering with a, the material that we don't want, and that is throwing off some of our slices. So to change that, we're going to grab our model. We're going to go back to the folder with all the materials, and we're going to apply either the material instance or the material itself for mesh slice. doesn't really make too much of a difference. And Let's press play again. So now we can see that the uh, ghosting of the first frame has uh, disappeared, but we are getting some specs, uh, which in the uh, volume preview manifest as uh, little lines coming across, which are not entirely correct. Now, this is because the mesh model itself is not entirely perfect, as it has some tiny holes in the geometry that uh, do cause these errors. Uh, ultimately, for this tool to work best, your model needs to be a single uh, shell that is watertight and has no intersecting uh, geometry. So, um, a very quick way to fix this with the mech would be to adjust its size a little bit, make it a bit smaller and change its position. Uh, let's hit play again. And now we can see that uh, this particular uh, issue has been resolved. But there is something else that can uh, sometimes quickly happen. So uh, if we press play and we zoom in and we try to look at how our uh, texture is being built, uh, we quickly see that um, some strange artifacts have appeared. And uh, yeah, our render target is looking a bit weird. So this sphere is actually uh, the free camera pod that's being controlled right now. So in order to avoid this, uh, let's just uh, back away from the cube during uh, rendering time. So once everything is done and finished, uh, we can actually zoom in and have a look at our mech as much as we want. So this is great and all, but how do we actually uh, get this texture and do something with it? So a great way to export it is if we were to head to our uh, mesh to volume, final results, and this RT final is essentially what we're getting. Um, the texture here appears to be red, but that is because it's, it's written on to the red channel only to save uh, performance. It's nothing really important. Uh, we can make it white if we just uh, add all the other relevant channels. So a way to save this is to right click on the render target and create static texture. And there we go. Now we have a texture. If we right click, asset actions, migrate. Uh, no, we don't need micro uh, asset actions and uh, exports. We can save it to wherever we want. It will be as an HDR format by default, 
but with Photoshop you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, this pack also comes with uh, several pre-made textures for a cloud, a neck, a fractal, and a head. We're going to look at those at, uh, at the store page and how they appear. Uh, let's look at some of the settings that we could do, that we could change. So by default, uh, the texture that's being created is a 4K texture, with each slice being a 256 by 256 pixels. So if we want to change the size of the texture, what we can do is um, open up the final results. Uh, let's get rid of this uh, texture that we just created. So on the RT final, let's open this up and we can adjust the resolution over here. So let's say we want uh, 2K textures. So we can just uh, divide by two. Uh, we do get some warnings when we start messing with 4K uh, textures in memory. So now we have a 2K uh, canvas, so to say. But now everything is gone back. So uh, let's press play and see what happens. So everything rendered very quickly. And from our wall, we can see that everything's uh, pretty much correct. But for some reason, our preview material is not showing uh, everything correctly. That is because we've changed the resolution of the overall canvas, but we never changed the resolution of the slices, which means that in X and Y direction, a, less, a smaller number of images is stored now, our preview material here needs to know the number of images in X and Y. So we're just going to open up this uh, instance. We're going to scroll uh, to the bottom of it where it says frames, and from 16, we're going to change it to 8. And uh, let's just hide our mesh. And here, our volume is now 8 by 8. It is a bit blurrier, uh, but uh, yeah, we overall uh, the best sort of balance that I found is a 4K image with each size being uh, uh, 256. So, uh, how do we change the resolution of the slices? Well, let's do something else. Say we want to go back to 4K uh, canvas. Make it so. Um, to change the resolution of each little tile, we need to select the box here. So um, we have two settings really here, which is the uh, flipbook resolution for each slice. So instead of 256, uh, let's make it so that there are more slices. So we're going to go with uh, 128 here. And uh, model to scan is a little eyedropper tool that if you've dropped a separate mesh here, because uh, so far we've pretty much selected this instance and we've swapped out the uh, uh, mesh here. But if you drop something else, uh, make sure to reference it with the little eyedropper tool and place it within the bounds of this square. So uh, let's see what happens, what's happening now. So we're seeing a lot more uh, slices being generated. So the trouble here is that each slice is actually being done at a, that there's a lot less uh, resolution for each slice. So while the result is fairly detailed, uh, it's not necessarily better looking. So our uh, uh, preview material is looking a bit funny again, so let's open it up and instead of 8, we now have 32 going up and down. So uh, let's hide our mesh, and here we have our mech with 32 slices. So in case uh, some hardware, you might see some uh, Bad performance, just for demonstration reasons, I have uh, cranked up some of the samples on this preview material here. So to 256, a reasonable one would be something like 64. And you do get a little bit more lines, but yeah, for performance reasons, if this is something that you'd want to, this is the first thing that you'd want to change, and also the shadow steps from 32 to maybe like 60. But yeah, I generally like the 32 and 256, it gives you a nice clear view of what's happening. Also, the density here is being cracked up way high at uh, 75, but if we go with something like 10, we could uh, start seeing through our model in a very cool holographic kind of way. So a quick demonstration that I'm going to do now is just to show off some of the uh, results that are being included in this pack. So we're just going to copy over this here. And uh, we're going to grab our, um, our material instance volume demo that we're going to apply it. So now everything's looking a bit messed up, but that is because uh, in this particular instance, uh, we 
we adjusted the x and y frames to 32 and we really should be looking at something like 60. So uh, this in fact is not the texture that we just rendered. This is a previous uh, example texture that's included in your pack. Uh, if we go to mesh to volume, final results, demo textures, this is our make. We also have a, oops, uh, let me just get that interesting back up. Yeah, we have a cloud. Uh, we have a uh, fractal. And we have a head. Uh, so far, the best results are with the head. It has the cleanest uh, geometry out of everything, and it's generally pretty hard to see some artifacts. Um, something that should be uh, mentioned is that please keep your model within the bounds or the box. Uh, you can see it's taken a little bit of off the top of the head here, you know, plenty intended. Um, so, overall, yeah, this is the mesh to volume tool. It generates maps uh, super quickly and they can be quite an easy to export and saving you a lot of time. It can be used for some really cool uh, visual effects. So thank you very much.